My guest today is Mark Downey. Mark, how are you? Hi, good to meet you. Likewise. What, what do you do, Mark? I'm a principal program manager here at uh, on the in Microsoft. Um, I um, work on the Visual Studio team. I am primarily concerned with production diagnostics and kind of the, all, all the problems that occur once you've your app has had actually been released to production. All those kind of concerns about the performance and whether it's working the right way. So the tools and the features and the teams I work with are all kind of have the same similar set of concerns. Like how do you make sure your app is doing the things you assumed it should do once you were debugging for like in months and months at a time. So I'll deal with things like, um, like I said, performance, um, trying to figure out, um, you know, why it's using that much memory, why it's using that much CPU, all those kind of interesting questions that we never thought of when we were actually creating widgets. Yeah. That is cool. Actually, I didn't know that. I mean, maybe that's a topic for a future show. This yeah. kind of instrumentation and troubleshooting, and yeah. uh, of the yeah, the, the black box that sometimes is an application. Exactly uh, that. But yes. today, I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about uh, Das Blog, and the reason that I, I this topic is near and dear to my heart is I use Das Blog for my mm -hmm. blog, and I have for over twenty years. Yeah. And can yeah. I was wondering if you could tell me it's it's changed a lot over the last twenty years. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of it? Yeah, so originally it was written by a brilliant engineer by the name of Clemens Vaster. He was the oh, kind Clemens. of original architect of He's that. been on my show. I didn't know uh, he Yeah, that. brilliant, brilliant uh, guy. Um, and, and it was just at the start of ASP.NET as a concept for Microsoft. Microsoft was definitely a desktop uh, for years before then, it had been a desktop company and and um, first-class Windows application. And then they started venturing into Windows, it, the web world, and ASP.NET. And .NET had dropped with .NET 1.0. Um, this was early 2000s. ASP.NET came out. And then DOSBlog was not too long after that. And so um, what, we, what he did was release one of the very first open source projects. Um, he started the momentum there. Um, then others picked up, um, Scott Hanselman and a few other folks around the community picked up and kind of ran with a baton for a long time. But around about, I think, 2014, no, before then, 2014 is when I picked up, when it would kind of been abandoned at that point. And um, I was using the blogging engine. I'd used other blogging engines in the past. And the one I'd used, I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but it went away. And I was frustrated by the lack of control I had over the things I'd spent so much time writing and crafting and creating. And so I was looking at an opportunity to, to jump on board with the blogging engine that existed. And DOSBlog was kind of towards the end of its activity. And so I yeah. started using it at that point. Um, and really, that's kind of where I decided at some point during that journey that I was going to actually do the work of maintaining this thing. Yeah. Uh, I remember that, and I started. I think I picked it up at the time that uh, Hanson was promoting it. He wrote his own blog, or he hosted his own blog using that tool. And right. I thought, well, he's got a larger audience than I do. This must scale pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, and exactly I, the I, same thing. I yeah, do remember one time asking him, uh, why are there no new, new features? And his response was, well, because all the features are already there. It's done, <laughs> which I, which seemed yeah. odd to me because is software ever really done? <laughs> right, exactly. The, yeah, that was a kind of the pithy response of feature complete. It's done. It's finished. <laughs> well, so you, you recognized that and you started, yeah. uh, you added your own spin on it. What, what, what did you do to it when you took it over? Yeah, so there was a couple of things I was frustrated by. Um, um, first of all was, as you say, the web never stopped moving. Even though DustBlog was kind of feature complete, the web never stopped moving. So all the things that happened round about that time frame, I mean, you've got to think Facebook came into existence, Twitter came into existence, social graphs as a concept came into existence. And meanwhile, DustBlog was feature complete, right? And it really wasn't. So as the web moved, I wanted to make sure my blog could align with that movement mm -hmm. and that if there were other people out there that wanted to take advantage of these kind of shifts and improvements to the web, why not? So at first, first, it was just as simple as the open graph. I wanted to be able to say, um, in some, in some kind of way, I wanted to be able to say that this is um, the, the kind of open graph 
function that lets you put information in the header. And I wanted that information to scrape information from the blog post that um so a particular blog post had a specific unique title and open graph you can define that in open graph that was really difficult to do unless you were willing to get into the code and so that was my first kind of i can fix this and i've got lots of experience with asp.net if i want to and so then i started thinking about well okay i'm fixing this for myself but surely there are other people who out there who might actually take advantage of this. Um, simultaneously to that journey, um, .NET kind of forked away from Windows only to Windows and Linux. So .NET Core, what we right. thought of as .NET right. Core. That was a huge step. A massive step. And I thought that is an amazing moment right here that, we, that Microsoft is literally putting bets into any platform you're on will be available. And it seemed to me that that was a great opportunity to divorce ASP, you know, DOS blog from Windows and simultaneously do a bunch of other things that I was, I thought that'd be a really interesting challenge. It was fast. Then it got my, you know, as soon as I realized this was something really, really interesting, um, I was all in. I just, um, actually, I reached out to Scott actually after sometimes just to say hey i think i've got this thing up and running you want to talk about this because i know you're still using the old version and um yeah that's when we decided to hey let's create a github page let's get this up and out there so mm -hmm. other people can contribute and it was surprising to see the amount of people that were interested in it yeah i noticed that you didn't uh just fork his github or you did fork his you didn't just create a new version on that you had a completely separate repository Yes, or the yeah. .NET Core version, the one that you initialized. Exactly. He he still has the kind of what what I would say is the latest ASP.NET classic version there. And if folks wanted for whatever reason to 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 use that, they could. Um, but yeah, I absolutely said from the beginning that we want to make this Windows or Linux doesn't matter where you want to host it. We want to make sure it works in both. And so there was a lot of assumptions baked into it, as you can imagine. Uh, it now being one of the oldest open source projects, it's, there's a lot of assumptions baked into it that we had to lift and shift out. Um, so between, you've got to figure, I uh, started this maybe, what, 2015, I think. Um, and by then, so much of what is Windows was baked into it. Things like registry settings were, <laughs> were deep in there. There's this concept of time zones that's in the regist Windows registry that it used um, and it was a weird kind of interweaving of deep assumptions about windows, deep assumptions about time zones and where you'd find the information on them. And you had to kind of find those pieces. But aside from those kind of weird threads, most of the code just actually just worked, <laughs> like just lifting and shifting a lot of just a lot of it really did just work. It was well written. Very nice. Uh, what are some of the, the unique features of DOS blog? Because there's a lot of bloggages out there. Yes. And uh, when one when a new one comes out, I always wonder, well, that's great, but why do we need yet another blog engine? Sure. I think one of the unique things that DOS blog was trying to do was say, you, you really don't need some kind of proprietary database to maintain your data. You can literally have it in any any format you want. And what what's wonderful about that is they they picked XML at the time. Uh, I know you know there's all kinds of JSON formats these days, but at the time XML was really the structured format we were all going for. Right. Um, and the reason why that makes that amazing to to me, I wanted to own as close to as possible my own words. I want to make sure that I can do with them whatever I want. So if they're in a SQL database, or whatever kind of database or whatever kind of proprietary format, um, it would um, limit me somewhat. And, and the idea of DOS blog being just text files that I could access, and I've been dealing with text files for as long as I've been a software developer and an engineer, so that I knew I immediately that kind of sense of ownership resonated with me. And so when I was selecting the dust blog in the first place, I remember thinking they're just files like I can just copy them to anywhere. I, I can. The backup strategy is easy. The, the 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 idea of not having anything between me and the information I'm creating was really appealing. So. And then, you know, further, if somebody wanted to go somewhere else, like you could literally write a program in an afternoon to kind of iterate over whatever these 
well-formed files were and kind of put it in any format you want. So yeah, I, lo I loved the unique proposition of DustBlog saying, you these are your files do with them as you feel they basically just xml files dated by by the the time of creation mm -hmm. and inside them are entries for each of your blog posts that's really just it yeah i'm not sure that i could write that program to iterate them in just a half a day but but i did like the idea when i chose it that uh they're so portable you know there's no yes. export and import yeah. when you want to move to another server yeah. move to another uh, uh version or just back them up it's just X yeah. copy these files as opposed to using whatever backup and restore tools or whatever's available in that proprietary database. Yeah, that was one of the things I thought about when that kind of openness st struck me as really, really powerful when I when we created DustBlog Core, kind of like the play on DustBlog with the core extension. When we created DustBlog Core, .NET Core, I said, I want you to just be able to grab your content your content, literally there's like three folders that you own with DustBlog. I wanted you to grab your content folder with your XML files and your images. I wanted you to be able to simply copy and paste that into DustBlog and it just work. And it respect the old URLs you had and redirect appropriately. Just the idea of owning the kind of URL and maintaining, preserving that as part of the web. I, I kind of have this um, romantic notion of of the web and URLs, how important they are to you, owning your kind of own space on the web, maintaining it. And the idea of maintaining software is also something I find interesting. Um, you know, the way we build software is unique. And I think being able to contribute to something that exists and is created and successful and continues to be helpful is actually uh, something worth doing. And, and, is, and it's actually kind of fun. Very cool. Uh, it's still an open source project, right? Absolutely. Yeah. GitHub uh, Papa String is my kind of URL and DustBlog dash core. Um, okay. We have tons of folks who kind of have responded and fixed things over the years and asked for things over the years. Um, I've seen um, people like, dedicated hours to certain aspects of it. As you can imagine, there are large pieces of going from what is essentially a web forms app to what is essentially an MVC application. There's a lot that goes on into making that happen. Um, mm -hmm. There were large portions of the code that exist literally as is, um, but the, the I would say the UI layer, the, the part that was web forms is almost completely gone. And the part that is MVC is almost new, new is completely new. Um, between those two layers, we created like an abstraction that said, I'm gonna talk to the old stuff and you don't have to worry about it. And mm -hmm. and then essentially at the top of that was the MVC stack, which is essentially new. And so we had a lot of people contribute over time um, just to make this successful. A lot of hours. Um, um, but like I said, I'm most proud of the fact of the, of the amount of code that we kept. Like the yeah. idea of saving a blog is essentially like when you really look at it, the code is almost unchanged and it's running on Linux machines and it's running on Windows and it's running, you know, in the cloud. It's it's essentially the same thing. That just kind of speaks to how well written it was in the first place. Very nice. Uh, tell me, talk a little about how you get started using this framework. What's what's, what's step one? Um, so if you want to get going with Dust Blog, um, over on the on the um, uh, Dust Blog, you have there's a wiki page there. Um, so um, in that wiki, um, there is instructions on basically how to get going in Azure. There's like a couple of one-click opportunities. You can you can start with kind of like a free where in Azure if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. If you have your own um, if website, um, I have instructions there on how to kind of move the bits over to your own site. You can copy that copy them into whatever site you're using. Um, the, um, the, the probably the easiest one to get going is just to use something free with Azure, like kind of just like a really low tier, free tier kind of situation with Azure. And you can basically one click and it'll just start start the whole thing up in you. That was a, a contribution from a community member we had maybe a couple of years ago. That was a great, actually I had no idea how to do that uh, and somebody kind of uh, resolved that. So in addition to that, I also have in the wiki, there's information about how to uh, how to write your first blog post, how to set it up, um, how to configure it securely, um, 
how to use Open Live Writer. Um, There's an old tool now that's open sourced as well. Live Writer was originally Windows Live Writer, if you remember. Yes. And then it became Open Live Writer when they made it available. Um, and so you can update there. I actually also did user experiences within DOS blog. So you can write the blog posts in there as well. That was, again, got a lot of contributions on making that work. Um, so you can add, edit, delete posts. You can, with, there's new tools around managing comments as well that you have there. So if you get a lot of comments, um, um, you can definitely deal with it there. Um, and then um, finally, yes, I also have a wiki entry as well for dealing with folks who are coming from the original DOS blog. Um, I actually pinged some of the folks that I knew about that were using the DOS blog old version of DOS blog, ASPX, dot extensions, the whole kind of web forms like infrastructure. A lot of people did move across like using, using, and the thing that I loved as well is that we were able to preserve. So if you had like some blog post dot ASPX, um, it now uses a, the kind of more cleaner, some kind of kind of, um, it just kind of uses the, the, the barbecue case, I guess you'd call it where you have some dash blog dash post that's yep. the actual new canonical url but it does still respect slum blog post dot aspx so it okay. still kind of respects that and redirects i was really keen on you not losing your um your kind of url uh, um that it would kind of 301 or 302 depending on which one is the permanent one it would 30 300 redirect to your new page and um and, and we preserve as much of your kind of existence, your kind of permanence on the web as we can. Mm, yeah, I think when I migrated, uh, and I didn't use these buttons, I kind of did it manually. I copied all the files from the repository into. I see, I see. I just FTP, I see. FTP there's just not as efficient because it makes it upgrading a lot harder. Yeah, and, sure. Um, and then I, uh, the ASPX worked, but I if I have a, a link inside of one blog post to another blog post, then that was broken. I right. I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had, I, I kind of, I went through it manually and found a lot of them, at least along the popular blog posts, but I'm sure there's yeah. a lot of broken links there as a result of that. But that's, that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually had, I had similar things only because I moved from, um, I, my, my website is popstring.com and I moved the blog from popstring.com to pop, popstring.com slash blog. Mm -hmm. And so I broke same, a bunch oh, same of thing, links. Same yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, I bunch of, broke a bunch of links. I, I That was where I was kind of wrote a program to go find things and then <laughs> replace things. I'm I'm a real stickler for stuff. So I think, I think I got most of mine fixed. I didn't, you know what, I didn't do that. But what I ended up doing, because it's an XML file, I was able to open up, uh, just go into Explorer, bring the files down to my yeah. local machine and do uh, control shift F and find these right. texts, right. like anything that had .aspx in the URL, oh, I cool. could find cool. that into a, not a global replace. I want to look at each one yeah. and update it that way. That made it a little bit easier. Yeah, um, good. Good. Probably would have, so. not, not nearly as efficient as your method, but <laughs> that's uh, yours is more clever. Um, what about uh, if I get stuck on something? What's the best place to go to get help? Is there, for example, a DAS blog blog? <laughs> Yeah, so what we we actually just kind of do everything at the at the GitHub repo. I answer literally all their questions there. We have a few other people who answer as well. Um, Scott's on there sometimes as well. I kind of, usually when there's feature requests or issues, um, I'm usually I'm just happy to help. Basically, if folks have issues, I set times up with folks to to help them set up their their post if they're interested. Um, uh, usually, I just take it as an opportunity to refine the documentation. So so folks reach out on on on. Just post an issue, tell me what the problem is, and I'll be happy to help. There's been a few, like I said, that few that's helped me kind of refine what I, what was essentially poor documentation. So it's always good oh, to get, get feedback. I see. I'm looking at this year. It's not a whole lot of chat around here, but I, I do see that yeah. Clemens is still posting. Yeah, so that's more recent, right? So more recently, um, he's got excited about doing dust blog work again, which has been so much so cool from my perspective, right? Because it's it's somebody whose whose work I used for years and whose work I've built on, and so he got excited about again the web just keeps moving, right? So if you've heard of the Fediverse, so the kind of idea of a social network that is a federation of independent kind of nodes 
So okay. let's let's use Twitter as the example, right? So Twitter.com is a particular social network. Um, they own Twitter.com, the, the domain. Um, but imagine if there were another version of Twitter that you could talk to from okay. Twitter. So Fediverse is essentially that an open source solution where each of these kind of um, nodes exist independently. Um, and so what I've been asking myself is what part should DOS blog play in this kind of new Fediverse? Um, um, and one of the things is the ability to find find yourself on there. So we've been both, both he and I have been ex thinking about DOS blog in this new context. Um, obviously, um, people have been looking for alternatives recently for a variety of reasons, which we won't get into now. Um, but I, I think there's value in this idea of um, this subscription model kind of defined by this um, uh, multiple noded, multiple uh, federated um, system. Each one of those nodes are kind of responsible for its own um, security and 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 moderation and all the questions. And the, my question was, could 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 your DOS blog blog exist somewhere in this Fediverse as an independent node, as a, as a kind of server that is producing content that other people subscribe to, like they subscribe to your RSS? And so. It's been kind of really interesting to 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 kind of understand this new fledgling kind of social network um, where it's kind of taken kind of corporations out of the kind of equation. And really, it's just about whatever is popular is based on whatever people are liking or boosting, as it were. It's like blockchain for social networks. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like just the idea of... Um, of the web moving and DOS blog moving as well, uh, and yeah. I'll just try to. So I did a few things like you can, you could, for example, search for me in the Fediverse, the kind of um, Fediverse, and you'd find my blog as well. So, um, or you'd find that my blog identifies me, um, which is popstring at dot net uh, dot net social um, is my handle there. So yeah, it, it, I just think there's a part to play in blogs and i think that kind of part to play changes is going to change over time uh, agreed uh, one last question what's uh what's the origin of the name papa string <laughs> that's funny um i'm a guitarist i think I've, there's a couple of basses back there um and i was at it's funny i'm not sure anybody's asked me this before i was at a campsite and i was playing the guitar and um i popped a string and literally that was that's where the name came from. I was just doing something and the string popped and it was like, that was like the nickname, I guess I was used in, in, in the campsite. Um, <laughs> I, never thought about, I, haven't, I haven't thought about why I came up with that name for, for a long time, but yeah, that was it. It was just a, a weird happenstance of playing you guitar. You pop somewhere. one string and for yeah. the rest of your life, <laughs> you're stuck with that name. <laughs> I'm stuck with it now. Yeah. All my handles are pop string at this point. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. This has been really educational. I'm, I'm glad I finally met the person that's the behind one of the tools that I use almost every day. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This has been fun talking. Uh, some of the most important moments in my life have included uh, technology that has made people, everyday people, um, better at their jobs, better at their social lives, better with their connections with friends. And um, I intend to be a technologist uh, for the rest of my life because I just love the space. I love how it informs culture. And um, it's kind of part of my mission uh, to make, uh, make the earth, the world, the space we have to live in uh, a little bit better.